Welcome to Sunday Tea Book episode 37. 37. Woo! Yeah! Simmerjeet, hello. Josh and Jubaijia, hello everybody. Welcome to Sunday Tea Book episode 37. Holy cow. New content, brand new article. Article? Mm -hmm. Paper? Anyway, Paper? brand new thing, which is an article. I'll call it an article. Hey, JS, welcome to the stream. Uh, I'm hi, stoked. Igor. <clears throat> and, and oh, Igor? Simmerjeet. How did I miss Lolo Igor? Here oh, Igor! Hey, Igor! I almost missed you there. Lolo is here. Hey, guys! So I'm glad you made it uh, a little bit. I don't know what it's like elsewhere in the world where you don't have daylight savings time. The <laughs> scourge, the scourge of daylight savings times. But we, are we just uh, realized that this morning because we noticed at this the same uh, time it was still like a hey, dark outside. On so. Yeah, I w so my alarm went off at the same time because the phone auto adjusts and I was exhausted. Okay, so anyway, I went back to sleep. D is <laughs> versified on Instagram, the color of tea. Welcome, Blackbeard. Welcome on Instagram. All right, guys, episode 37 of Sunday Tea Book. What is Sunday Tea Book? Let me tell you what Sunday Tea Book is, guys. For those of you that are new and don't know, and for those of you that have been here a long time, but maybe just want to hear my voice. <laughs> All right. Sunday Tea Book is where Jen and I take a book, paper, or an article that is full of great information and hard to access in the West, either because it's exclusively written in Chinese or the translation um, leaves something to be desired. So, um, and I guess in this case, or it's just unnecessarily obscure and not in the light enough. So we're going to drag it out into the light and get it out in front of people. Hey, Dresden Mark from uh, on the Instagram side. So that is what Sunday Tea Book is. We, we go over those things together and the amount of learning that I experienced from this has been incredible. So we decided to share it in a weekly live stream. Here we are at episode 37 and we have some brand new content for you today because we finished China Tea and we're going on with Passing it over. Was that smooth? Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was smooth, okay? I don't know what I was thinking. I threw the football. <laughs> She's got it. Yes, okay. So today we're gonna uh, dive into the uh, tea classification in theory and practice. So it's translated, uh, uh, but this is uh, Originally written in Chinese, lay the foundation. This is the birth of six tea categories. A lot of times we thought those uh, uh, has been a long time since China has a six right. tea category. This uh, theory, this concept, was uh, uh, put forth in the seventies, and this mm. article is the Pretty author modern. and mm. Professor Chen Chuan, who uh, stated his theories, and uh, very interesting and. Um, yeah. So before you run away <laughs> thinking to yourself, oh gosh, I know everything about the six T categories. Don't do it. Okay. I thought I knew a lot about the six T categories. This document is very enlightening. Don't run away. Okay. You're good. There's a ton to be learned. I was pretty much shocked. So how it's going to work, and this is especially important if you're on the Instagram side, is um, unlike last time where we uh, pulled it up and read it, this time we're going to kind of You'll see that there's a link down below on the YouTube side. There's a link down below to mm -hmm. the document that we're looking at. Mm -hmm. uh, so you can pull that up and, uh, and, and it's there. We're going to summarize that and then home right in on the spots that are interesting and kind of, um, well, that are interesting. Mm -hmm. So uh, Instagram folks, you got to jump on over to YouTube if you want to catch out the whole stream. So Tucker, I noticed you um, asked, I don't know if it was a typo or whatever, but you asked to join our Instagram live. This is not that kind of Instagram live, maybe some other time, but do jump over to the YouTube side, everybody, and check us out there. We're going to have a little bit more of a, uh, it's not a presentation, but it's just more, it's the right <laughs> scenario for this kind of activity. So that's why. Because we still have some snippets to show some yeah. key discussions. Uh, all right, so see you later, Instagram. See you on the YouTube side. Bye-bye. Right. So before we dive into, because uh, I think it's really uh, fun to give a little uh, kind of introduction about this uh, um, article, this paper. But before we dive in that, I need to have some tea, because you probably notice I'm a little bit zigzag everywhere. I don't know what I'm doing. Yeah, it's tea time. So, so as go. you... Go <laughs> ahead. Yeah, you go ahead. 
No, as you saw on the little uh, front reel there, the intro reel. Oh, that looks funny. I'll just post that on Instagram. So as you saw on the front reel, today's tea is going to be uh, Tian Jian. Um, um, so the link to that is also down below if you want to have a look, a closer look at it or maybe pick some up for yourself. I, mm. We decided, we're like, what should we drink? And um, I was like, we... <laughs> Okay, I'm going to tell them about our, my nerdy little sheet. Oh, yeah. So when we did Sunday Tea Book, I built a spreadsheet with, uh, with all the teas we would have for every episode. And I made a little fairness chart that, that scans the categories and makes sure we're kind of balanced between <laughs> the six categories. So I was like, oh, dark tea is a little weak. Let's have a dark tea. So that's, that's why we're having Chen Chen. And mm. I love it. I really love this tea. This is a great, uh, uh, if I recall, it's, it's got some nice smokiness. I, I sometimes call it... Um, it's not like a lapsum smoky, but it's like a campfire. Yeah, campfire it's log different. cabin smoky. Yeah, really nice. Uh, let me just mm. put Sunday. You're right. This is more dry smokiness, I would say. Mm. Yeah. yeah, let me know what in your cup today is. I know Zhu Bajie is having some da for lunch. Oh, that's nice. We just had that yesterday. Mm, yes, I. Mm. Uh, well, I won't spoil anything. There's a video coming out about that, so stay tuned. And now that's a good time to say, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button down below so you know when we do release that video. Bam! Mm -hmm. Okay. So, I'm just trying to do figure out... Do you think out... I... Sh maybe I should uh, talk about since I'm just waiting for the vi uh, video, the kettle to boil. I just want to give you guys a little mm. intro about uh, who this uh, author is, what this article is about. Uh, basically, as mentioned, that... Uh, this article together with a bunch of other uh, papers and studies and researchers that are put forth by Mr. Uh, Professor Chen Chuan explaining his theory about how to categorize tea. Oh, wrong one! <laughs> Sorry! Sorry, technical, technical move. Here's what was supposed to happen. Oh, that was so funny. That was so wrong. Sorry, it's not time yet. Okay, guys, it is coming though. It is coming. Oh, I hit the wrong one. Here's what I meant to do. So they could see Mr. Chen Chuan. Yeah. So there he is. And so in this paper, oh. we will dive. No, it's okay. It's perfect. Uh, that's called a live, right? <laughs> For the mistakes we have. He said they didn't drop a <laughs> swear word or something. Yeah. So uh, in this paper, uh, really is the key section of his theory mm. of, uh, mm. you know, why categorize like that, uh, what's the similarities and his reasons and stuff. Uh, so, and this uh, part was uh, translated uh, by, um, I, it was uh, Michael Salt, the yeah, good librarian at uh, Cambridge, I believe Cambridge, yes, published in the French magazine of, do you know the French no. full name? It's an agricultural. Uh, yeah, I think um, the, in the link down below, I put all those information mm. and also the link to the finished uh, translation. Uh, so that's what this is about. It's very interesting. If you are just uh, diving into tea and wondering what are the six tea types, what's the basic like difference, really high level uh, uh, knowledge about that or information about that, uh, we have a video uh, telling. Uh, we have a video about it, and we also have we have two right. The second one we call that 2.0, so a little bit advanced. Mm -hmm. And if you're already very familiar with 60 type, this uh, reading is for you. We will dive into more detail. Yeah, it's, it's kind almost of... like, uh, I don't know, like when we learn physics, when we just start to learn physics, we have certain things we know. Then when we jump to the next yeah. level, you realize that what we learned sometimes is not fully correct right, because right. we didn't... Uh, That's a great metaphor. We didn't provide the full spectrum of uh, possibilities. Mm -hmm. So this is uh, similar to that. Yes, exactly. Uh, so uh, just want to say, if you just wanted a quick and dirty, quick and dirty, just a quick information about what are T types, T categories, and what's the difference, um, check out the uh, the other videos which I already put the link down below. Yeah, Those absolutely. Will be the quicker answer. I would even say if you happen to have just stumbled across us now it's probably a good idea to go and find those videos and just use those as a warm up. Get yourself familiar those, with those two videos because we're, this is definitely some next level stuff in this document. And uh, of course, like always, we won't be going through the whole document in one go. It's quite long, although not as long as China Tea, which we just finished last week. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, unlike China Tea, where we were uh, updating the translation, mm -hmm. 
after the show, we're going to put a book review like a, or a show review. It'll be available on the link maybe around Monday or Tuesday. Mm -hmm. Just keep your eyes open for that. If you're familiar with uh, how we've been doing Sunday Tea Book lately, we have been... Pause. Mm, hint of that smokiness. I noticed Cindy just Cindy joined and she's drinking okay. Lapsung. We didn't let you oh, know what... Oh, that's nice. But you pretty much nailed it. We've got a bit of a smoky Tian Jian. You've got a smoky Lapsung, so we're rocking and rolling. Um, so what I wanted to say was, though, is uh, if you've been with Sunday Tea Book for a bit, you notice that the live, go it goes down. If you ever are, don't panic. It always comes back on the main channel. And then th at that point, we'll have the review notes there at that time. Mm -hmm. A mm -hmm. little bit about uh, the author, Chen Tuan, is uh, he doesn't have a, uh, a very, uh, he's not very popular or very well known in the right. Western tea world. But uh, he is a uh, very, uh, a real tea master. Like mm -hmm. I would say, not a, you know, sometimes we overuse the word tea master, but this is a real tea master. Yeah, real deal for sure. And right. it's a shame that he's not, he needs to be more well known. So that's kind of one of the reasons this document. Right, I made a note. Here, so here. Hope you guys don't mind. I I'll put this up. Make, make sure I got the full information mm -hmm. here. So he was uh, born in 1908 and died in 1999. So that has been decades ago. Mm -hmm. Then he died. He is an uh, expert in tea in uh, education, tea education, and uh, tea pro, uh, processing. Mm, and similar to the title of this document, he's an expert in theory and in practice. So this is one of mm. the other things that even augments his already deep credibility even further. It's not pure theoretical, it's not pure practical. He's really He's both. a both, mm. and he was one of the founders of uh, uh, post-secondary tea education. Mm. Like the major in universities, as a yes, it's post secondary education in China, folks. I bet you some of you are wish you could sign up for that course <laughs> at uh, whatever. Yes, um, and uh, he has special books. Uh, uh, he he wrote a lot of books and was the chief editor for a lot of uh, tea books. The m most uh, well known or most influential ones are the two. One is the his. <coughs> One is the history of tea, Cha Ye Tong Shi. So that's a more academic history rather than just say, oh, what happened in this? So he wow. sectioned that into the tea production history, the tea uh, 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 drinking history, the custom history, the cultural side, uh, the wow. tea poly policy side about how different dynasties is very uh, pro, well-sided, a wow. uh, very comprehensive book, a really deep dive. It's uh, uh, oh, oh, oh. a little under the table nudge there to make sure the tea Thank comes you. out. I just did a tap tap. I saw the water around the guy one lid, so I thought uh, maybe I could give you a Thank little tap you. tap. No I worries, totally no worries. She does the same for me, folks. I got to use this hand because my other hand is obscured right now. Okay, yeah, so super interesting. That I'm actually, as you speak about that um, document, I'm intrigued and in thinking maybe that's the next Sunday Tea Book, but we probably need to circulate around so the different authors book. more. Yeah, oh, yeah. it's a thick one, eh? I yeah, bet. Yeah, it's a very thick one. And um, his expertise oh, and another smoke, one. Smoke, smoke, smoke. <laughs> right? I really smell that uh, during the whole, like, a brewing. And strangely, melon. Melon rind. And For me, smoke. it's melon rind. Yeah, melon rind. It's not an overly, like I, I oversteeped for sure. And look oh, at this, the leaf. This tea is okay. This tea can handle it. And I put eight grams of leaf. There's a good amount of leaf in there. Did Remember, slap it? that camera. Slap it. It's hard because it's steaming. I don't want to, because in which case he cannot. Oh, oh boy. Focus, focus. Don't. There you there go. There we you go. Did it. I put a good amount of leaf in the cup, but it's not overly strong or anything. Oh, boy, that is good. That's just what I needed. All right, guys, let's have a little look at the com Oh, I didn't mean to interrupt. You were in the middle of explaining. Oh, I just uh, want to, I think. Check I the notes. Check the notes. <laughs> no, no, it's good. <laughs> I'm going to be know. checking the when notes I a lot today. When I have the camera, I, my memory just uh, shut off. Yeah, and not to mention, it's a new format for us, too. Mm. We did uh, we did spend a good amount of time going over it, but you know what? It's live. Why are mm. we live? Because it's casual. Mm. It's back and forth. Of course, as always, guys, and it goes without saying, but um, we're counting on you to throw in with questions, comments, mm. suggestions, uh, when we're stumped, 
um, for sure. That is why we do these as a live and not as regular videos. It's way more engaging, way more fun to be with you guys sipping tea. And that's kind of why I wanted to jump to the comments and see what everyone's sipping. Right. You check in the comments. I keep talking. Yeah. Okay, rock and roll. <laughs> I have so much to talk to do. I feel. Yeah. It's just the beginning of this. I want to explain a bit and uh, talk. Oh, continue on his uh, work, not only in like a history and some more than just academic. Uh, his book touches on tea planting, you mm. know, how to plant tea gardens and stuff like that, processing and uh, how to uh, testing tea for quality. How is that do you this test? One? Not this one. Right. Just to explain what, why is he kind of a, why is he a real tea master besides the work in the field or the work uh, in the academic and uh, the spectrum of uh, uh, work he does and also in trainings and a lot and why I think it's very interesting to read this particular paper is because there is a perfect English translation when you read mm. the English translation uh, you will find it's very well written. It's fluid. It's very, really nice. Very uh, uh, academic. Yeah, very pro. I was going to say it has a very academic tone. Written. Yeah, really. uh, there's no English issues there, but and because of that. But there are you, issues. <laughs> yes, because it's so Sports, perfect. Sports. That your uh, how do I say it? the guard of watching out. While the previous one, the China tea English was a kind of a. It puts you on guard because yes, it's so like chunky. A, you're like, mm, I better try to, hard to interpret this or, or put my own, like uh, try to figure out what they were saying because sometimes it's hard. Mm, but this, this one? It's crystal clear. Yes, but and because of that, it will make you think you are really absorbing all the good information. Yeah, while there, this, uh, there is uh, translation issues. Yeah, there are some traps, yes. basically. It's not intentional, mm. of course, but because it's so clear and so well written, you won't be thinking about, is this wrong? Mm. Um, Right to yeah. to paraphrase what you just said. Another <laughs> interesting is this article was uh, uh, the English version was published in nineteen seventy nine, and the the uh, time frame of this uh, whole six T category concept was in the seventies. So it has been uh, third uh, sorry thirty forty fifty years ago, and. Uh, there is a time difference. Some of the elements in the paper doesn't apply to today's tea world. And uh, there's uh, sometimes, uh, if you read by yourself, you might not be aware because a lot of times we talk about Chinese tea, we put the word tradition and people tend to date that back really far. Like a Gong Fu tea set, the ceremony is very recent, but people right. feel like, oh, traditional Chinese tea stuff. Yeah. Yeah, and last is because the six tea category is a, a kind of a well-known but a lot of um, misconceptions pseudo understood yes uh i think it's a good to bring in a full picture rather right. than, because right. a lot of people are debating we're having discussion based on a little limited information right uh so yeah and especially for a lot of you guys who have been drinking tea you're pretty familiar with the six tea categories this is a great direction to go in terms of uh next level information and also getting back to where it all comes from cool. <laughs> no more Dora talking for me so i i saw that um jubaijia loves my spreadsheet lolo is astounded that we're already on summertime and yes it was very early it in was the morning. A, uh, i think uh, they said the time to give us a hope as today is still minus 15 outside. right minus 15 degrees celsius outside so yeah but uh, it, now we're waking up in the dark again, mm. whereas we were waking up in the light. So they, I don't know, I, I just wish they'd make this go away and just stick with one time. It's kind of a global, I didn't realize, and, and now a new, so 10, 15 years ago, this would have been a less compelling reason for me. It was just because it bugs my sleep. But now I've got you guys, I was thinking about you guys and I'm like, if some of them don't switch, we're gonna be an hour off of their regular schedule. Mm. So I hope you guys caught the, um, we tried to blast that out this morning, realizing the impact. But yeah, this whole daylight savings time is a real global disturbance and is unnecessary and should be completely eliminated from the face of the earth. <laughs> Whoever thought of it, uh, it may have been a good idea at one time. But if you're a leader of a country or a province and you're listening to me, fix this, please. OK, enough <laughs> of that. Uh, probably you're not even there. Let's see. Uh, somebody was drinking a Shali Xian uh, High Mountain Oolong Lolo is drinking that. 
And Lolo also says uh, the leaves look good when you were showing the leaves. And yes. you look great, which oh, I agree. She does look great. She looks amazing. And, um, Do you like the lavender boy here? Mm -hmm. <laughs> right? Um, and um, where else? Oh, and uh, Cindy, we mentioned, was drinking a lapsang. So she's got the smoky thing mm. all tied in. She's kind of psychically tied in. We don't even have to tell yeah. her what to brew. She's yeah. just on the ball. Um, Simmers Jeet says tea trivia time. Doe, yes, we had a little sneak peek. Don't worry, it's coming up right after we just uh, check out the comments. Mm. Ooh, Igor finishing up with a 2004 Liao Bao. Mm. Oh, four. I really love Liao Bao Cha and especially the uh, old ones. We had one in 2016 17 that mm, was so bamboo y, mm, not. It wasn't just Shupuar under a different name. Not to be mean, but anyway. Um, and Lolo said, you look awesome. Josh quit out on his piano practice <laughs> just to come have some drinks. So good good job, Josh. I hope you have a good tea lined up. Diversified is drinking a eh? uh, Alishan Oolong. And yes, so, and Josh says, I was completely and utterly surprised by the time shift. Yeah, me too. Even though I knew it was going to happen. I thought I slept until noon and was wondering, but nope, it was just 11, the time switched. Yeah, I yeah, okay, and he also hates daylight. Who doesn't? Who right, doesn't? serious farmer. I was saying it's because here the farmer is so machine. And other times, if it's a strong farmer culture, it oh, would it's be really very disruptive, very disruptive and unnecessary. So, guys, it is tea trivia. Yeah. Oh wait, time. Okay, let the I forgot to press play on the back end. Hang on, I'm pressing play on the back end. I'm rushing back over here. Okay, everything's good. Okay, guys, tea trivia time coming at you. <laughs> coming at you. I'm, she's still over there. I'm just going to turn it. She likes the little break. I asked her if she wanted me to bring her in. She's like, no, no, give me a break. I'm going to brew some tea in the meantime. <laughs> so we got 25 seconds. Tea trivia time is, um, is all about just having fun, okay? It's a little warm-up to um, our Sunday tea book that I hope you guys will love. Take a guess if you don't know the answer. I put some really fun, zany questions in today. Well, at least one completely unrelated, but it warms up into the next question. So here we go. Just enter the number, hit enter, and the machine will calculate your score. Here we go. And I hope you guys nail some of these. All right, the first question. By this dynasty, all six of the modern tea types had emerged. Is it one, Tang Dynasty, two, Ming Dynasty, three, Qing Dynasty, or four, Shang Dynasty? Bruna got here just in time under the wire for tea trivia time. All right, yes, Simmerji, this is for real this time. So place your bets, place your bets. Let me do this. Still some time to make your guesses, guys. We've got some time. So by this dynasty, all six of the tea types had emerged. Was it the Tang Dynasty, the Ming Dynasty, the Qing, Di Qing Dynasty, or the Shang Dynasty? When the time runs out here, guys, there's still a few moments to get your answers in. So do not feel like you've missed out. The, uh, the answers are brewing, but you can still slide one in for a short infusion, so to speak. All right. Nice. nice. So lots of answers for one and three coming through. And, oh, there's an answer for two as well. Igor likes the ticking, I think. I know it's the most recent, but I always get my dynasties confused. Wait, Close. Oh, it's it? not quite the most recent, I don't think. Qing I think is the most recent. It is the most recent. Good one. And many of you got it, so good work. I don't even know my dynasties. I only know the right answers. And, uh, yeah, so good guesses, everybody, all around. This is a tricky one, a bit of a history lesson, and just a fun question. It's going to come up later today. We upgraded with a lot of sound effect. Right on. So next question. The first style of Kilgreen was... I didn't get this one vetted, so I might not even be right. So here we go. Was it one, pan frying slash firing, two, boiling, three, steaming, or four, roasting, baking, depending on what you like to call that. Ooh. JS says yes to the sound effects. Yeah, thanks, JS. Burned some midnight oil last night looking for those. Bonus points for anyone who can guess where the sound effects come from. <laughs> Ting is the most recent. Thank you, Jubaijia. I have already been set straight by my comrade. All right, as I said earlier, you still have a little bit of time, 
but it is winding down as the start to brew your answer. So lots of guesses for one. I won't bore you with the TikTok every time. Lots of answers for pan frying, firing, and um, I really hope I got this right. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like you guys are gonna nail one of our sound effects soon. Oh boy. If it's is that true? Uh, no, I, I don't know. I don't know because I, I a lot of well, pay attention. Here we go. So, oh, you're right. We nailed a sound effect. I stumped the crowd. I stumped the crowd. All right. The answer is steaming. I'm looking to my right to make sure I'm correct. The answer is what? Boiling. Boiling. Oh, it's boiling. Okay. So guess what? I get one too. I even missed the right answer, but we still all got it wrong. So anyway, boiling. Maybe she'll tell us more about that later, but right now we have to go on to question three. How many ingredients are there in beer? How many ingredients are in beer? Is it three ingredients that make beer, two ingredients, four ingredients, or five <laughs> ingredients in beer? So this is the traditional purity law style beer, okay? Nothing fancy here, okay? I know there can be a lot more, but the traditional textbook answer. And yes, this, is a, this may seem a little bit off topic, but I assure you, I'm going to bring it back. <laughs> no, I think this actually is guessed wrong. steaming, but second guessed. It's okay, Josh. Steaming was wrong. It was boiling. I had no idea. Okay, guys, a few more moments to get your uh, answers for how many ingredients in beer. Um, Jubai Gia says, ha, 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 ha. Is water also an ingredient? The good question. I will tell you that yes, water in all cases is an ingredient. Um, and by all cases, I mean in this session of Tea Trivia. Okay, answers pouring in for number one and number three. I see a number four as well. And Clifford Little comes in with a uh, guessing number four. And the answer is number three, which is four ingredients, water, yeast, hops, and malted barley or just barley. Uh, those are the four ingredients in beer. How could that possibly be, and good congratulations to all of you who got it right, how could that possibly be related to tea, you may ask? Well, here's how. How many ingredients in a cup of tea? Is it one ingredient? Okay, and remember the question from earlier, does water count? I've already answered it, I won't say it again. Is it one ingredient? Is it two? Is it three? Or is it four ingredients in a cup of tea? Josh says four according to the German Reinheitsgebot, beer purity law. Yes, and that is exactly what I was going with because that's kind of the standard answer. There could be lots more in a fancy in a fancier beer. The program doesn't detect very well the numbers and the answers numbers. Mm. Right, they don't line it up, right? It's really yeah. zigzag. <laughs> um, I meant there are four. Ah, right. Um, how many ingredients in a cup of tea? Okay, guys, a few moments left. Lots of answers coming in for number two. Somehow the computer lined them up perfectly this time. Um, that is very abnormal. How did it see my answer three to be one? I don't know, okay? I don't take any responsibility for the computer's <laughs> bad uh, tabulation of your marks. You'll need to take it up with the computer. Good luck with that. Uh, Josh, fire, water, tea, air, something like that. The answer is two, and most of you got to... Okay, I'm going to audit. Oh, Simmerjeet, your last text had the number three in it. I think that's what happened. I think that's what's happening. Oh, but then you know your most recent one said two. It did an update. Oh. Okay, I'm not sure what's going on there, but I'm giving you guys the uh, everybody got it right. Yeah. And we're on to our... Final question. A tea is categorized by one, the process, two, the flavor, three, the process and flavor, four, the color of the liquor. All right, directly related to today's, today's uh, incursion into tea processing in practice and theory, in theory and practice, either way. A tea is categorized by one, the process, two, the flavor, three, the process and flavor, or four, the color of the liquor. English, tea, water, milk, sugar. Ah, and Clifford's yeah. right. I didn't think about that. Oh, I was so mean to, uh, to people. And we always say there's nothing wrong with putting milk and sugar in your tea, okay? We're not those people who think that that's some kind of heinous crime. 
All right, a few more moments to slide your answers in. I see lots of answers for one, the process, and a few answers for, a couple answers for three, the process and flavor, and an, even an answer for the color of the liquor from Lolo. That's all great answers, all great answers. And this one is a little bit controversial. I did it on purpose to kind of set the tone for today. And the answer from my, uh, from my uh, aspect is the process and the flavor, but you are all winners to me. So great work, everybody, on all the uh, great answers. Process is indeed a major factor of it, but we're going to talk about that more as we dive into the book. Let's see what the computer, we know that this is wrong, okay, everybody? It's just for fun. But hey, way to go, Josh, in the, in the pole position, number one with Igor and Bruna, all with, uh, looks like, three correct answers for Josh and two for Igor and Bruna, and Cindy also got two. You're all winners in my book. Okay, thanks for participating in Tea Trivia Time. I just show up to do <laughs> Just showing up for the thumbs up. I love how you shut the crowd. Uh, that you sh we should make that a sum, in fact, a fade out. Yeah, I tried. So it was, the, it's a lot trickier than you could imagine. The crowd doesn't feel like so... <laughs> yeah. Shut up. yeah, it's a little bit tricky. So maybe next time I'll have a fade on the sound effects. Maybe I'll have some new sound effects. Who knows? Maybe we'll have some of Josh's piano playing mm. in the stream. Who knows? Okay. Everything is possible. All I know is that was tremendous fun. It's always super fun to come up with these questions and try to... Uh, you are a very difficult tr uh, crew to stump. It seems the only time I can stump you is when I've actually stumped myself as well. So uh, there we go. We're refilling our teacups mm -hmm. and we will be diving in to... Oh, so let me... Maybe for those of you who got here a little bit later and missed mm -hmm. the intro, we... Um, a little bit of a new format. I'll just yeah. kind of paraphrase that, okay? So down below in the YouTube video is a link to the document. So unlike before, we will not be bringing the document up on the screen, so you gotta grab it. Have a quick read of section one. We're just doing the, the first section, everything in front of, I've got my copy here as well. If my phone will cooperate, and it will. Thank you, phone. So we're reading everything down to the section that's numbered one T nomenclature, but we will paraphrase it too. If you don't have that right in front of you, we'll be kind of covering what's in the document and then focusing right in on what mm. is... Uh, because you can really read that uh, before, after, or anytime you want. I, she's like, what's the matter? I got her, so we highlighted these in advance and I got her highlighted copy already on her phone for her. I forgot to grab the highlighted copy for myself. Yeah. I just have a blank copy. You can use that as a reference of where it is. Yeah, sure. Okay. So I'll start out by, um, um, by just paraphrasing sort of what's in it. If I miss anything, you'll, mm. you'll, you'll back me up, all right? Mm -hmm. So the document starts out, okay, Tea Classification and Theory and Practice by Chuan Chen. Uh, professor at the Institute of Agriculture of Anhui uh, in Hefei Province, PRC, People's Republic of China. So he basically starts out by talking about the tea plant and that it originated in China and uh, give a very, I didn't know he had a whole giant book on the history of tea with so many uh, angles like you mentioned. Mm. So not surprisingly, that's exactly how this paper starts with a one a very, very, very paraphrased one paragraph history of tea originating in China and how it goes through uh, the different dynasties throughout history all the way back to 16th century BC, 16th century BC. OK, so way, way back and coming up all the way till modern times, 1911, which is modern times for the time of the paper. And um, and everything is sort of in between. But there's a spot around the Tang Dynasty where, so I'm gonna jump in now with our, our point, mm. which is, uh, which means I gotta do this. So hanging on with us, we're just switching over. I just wanna mention the mm. first paragraph is basically an introduction, talking about a long history of a tea in China as the, the birthplace of tea, as well as the earliest to utilize this plant in life in different ways throughout the history and in china there's a saying that uh, basically we cannot learn all the tea names in our lifetime because there are so many like counting the stars i'm reading it it's kind of pretty not in a lifetime though you spend your days and nights in learning can you name 
all the teas. That's really nice translation. It that's is, the gist, is. though. The Chinese one is more rougher. <laughs> and that's what we were saying about uh, about the general state of the translation in this book. Uh, if you read through it, it's very eloquent. It's um, an academic even. Mm. Um, the the phraseology, the the use of English is is really like it's a uh, it's a level up from what I could certainly what I could write or say. <laughs> time signature MMA, holy time warp. <laughs> that's right. such a good. Yes, yes, it's a, actually I have to correct you there time signature. It's an unholy time warp, okay? It's an unholy demonic <laughs> aberration of a of a state induced time warp. It's awful. All right, all right, calm down, calm down. Okay, so anyway, um I brought up sort of the first part in this paragraph which does have my highlighting, which is around tongue times we see the development of compressed tea and the rank, rank smell. smell. So we thought this is interesting. Um, what is the rank smell? What is this, right? Right? So uh, in tea processing or stuff, we use the word ting uh, to refer to like a kill green. Literally means green. Uh, we have kill green, shake green, uh, all that. Means yeah, green, tea right? means green. In tea processing, in tea tasting, ting is undesired flavor mm. of raw veggie. Uh, Cho. Sometimes it it could manifest as a vegetal flavor. Sometimes because it's different phases, it could manifest in other undesired flavor. Mm. Mm. So the purpose of all those fancy ways of making tea or drying tea, uh, one of the uh, purpose is to get rid of that tin flavor. We call that tin chou. Mm. So the rank smell. Green stink. Yeah, it's not a specific smell that you would be like a uh, recognize it right away it needs to mm. be in the room like have some experience with uh, tea tasting and tea processing to know what that is but that's that uh, mm -hmm. greenish uh, you know raw veggie flavor you would have mm -hmm. from green leafies and right and then it says um so this the Tang dynasty saw the compressed teas the rank smell of which had been eliminated by evaporation Yes. Mm. So this so. whole this uh, this sentence is basically telling you, is talking about sha ting, right? Kilgrim. Yeah. So it is translated as a uh, uh, rank, uh, you know, eliminating the rank smell. Yeah. So and time signature was wondering, is it blue tea? Um, and it's but this is not ting. No. Because that's a little confusing, right? Yeah. Is ting blue? Uh, ting cha, yes, is blue, but ting can be, in terms of tea, there are many meanings. Right. It could mean the leaf itself, it could mean the 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 uh, tea categories. Right. Yeah. So this particular use of the rank smell, the, the ting cho, is not referring to to blue tea, it's referring to uh, green stink, the sti that raw veggie smell. Mm. Um, so here and here is a little mistake saying that eliminated by evaporation. Mm. It's not evaporation, it's steam. Mm. Uh, because in Chinese, a steam and evaporation could use the same. No, keep going. Could use the same character. Zhen. So in Chinese, this is just zhen qing. Right. Steam. This is why I picked green. evaporate uh, steaming for the first kill green ah, technique, not boiling. So right. I was wrong. Boiling is the first. But yeah. steaming was the one that eliminated the rank smell in Tang Dynasty when they made those little compressed tea uh, pucks. I think they were pucks, right? Yes. Mm. And later on in the paragraph, uh, people, I think you were discuss, uh, discussing about uh, green, brown, black, oh, yes. red Maybe teas, and ahead. white, and right. blue. No so, more reading ahead. No, just kidding. Feel free to read ahead. <laughs> Let's see what they say. No, so we did highlight. So that's the next. Oh, you want to check it out? Yeah. According to my guide in Xi'an, the actual earliest tea found at site was on the Yan Mausoleum of Han that I visited. I found similar articles from China on this. Mm. Could be. I don't know if you want to comment. I'm not sure what the Yan Mausoleum of Han. What's the mausoleum? What uh, that it's uh, like a burial place. A mausoleum. Is that right? Is a mausoleum like a crypt, but a fancy crypt? Like a... I'm not sure, honestly. Huh. But it's a little bit off topic, although it is very interesting. It kind mm. of it kind of harkens back to the beginning of the paragraph where he's talking about the history of tea, and it is possible there's been some discoveries since this was published. 
quite some time ago. Dude, it was highlighted, basic figure <laughs> ground stuff. Yeah, yeah, sure enough, sure enough. We got it covered, we got it covered, we figured it out. Um, so the, anyway, the next area, all right, it's good, it's good, we gotta have some fun. That's why you need the Chinese writing so you know what they refer to, e.g. blue tea, yeah. Yes. Yeah, exactly, so that's what I wanted to highlight here where we're talking about um, the tea, so uh, during the Ming era, the high temperature processing for, for eliminating the rank smell, again, the Qing Chou, the, the, that green smell, was applied to green, brown, black, and red. And during the Qing period, white and blue teas. So as I read ahead, I realized these are the terms they're going to use over and over in this publication for this 6T category. So mm. rather than always flip them, Let's just talk about them. So green, check. Everybody knows green, it's, it's the same. Yes. Brown, equal to um, yellow tea. Surprise. And, yeah, it kind of surprised me. And I, to be honest, I got about, I got about, uh, I won't say halfway, a quarter of the way through the whole document before I finally clicked in what that meant. Mm. Uh, but if you do some simple elimination, it's not that tricky. Black and red are the typical um, are the typical Chinese descriptions of black and red. So dark tea is what we we call black tea, just to make it unambiguous on our website. Mm -hmm. And a lot of Western vendors have adopted that, uh, I think, have adopted that protocol. And red tea is what we call in the West black tea. We're going to come to that, in fact. But we're going to leave it. And I'll just remind you when we come over it. Mm. And the wine and blue. Blue is uh, refers to oolong tea, also mm. known as a qing cha. Mm. And uh, Qin, the color is not literally blue, but because green is already taken, I think that's why it's blue. It's quite uh, similar-ish. Qin has that, but uh, now, uh, you know, in future of this article, when you see uh, blue tea, you know, it's talking about oolong tea. Right. So, um, oh, I think I was right. Chuba Jia does say it was a tomb, which I thought, that's what I thought. Oh. Oh, I think what he um, meant was the first, uh, like the tea leaves was discovered there as, um, how should I say that? As a, mm. like a, like it's a, preserved. a tribute, sacrifice or a tribute, right? No, because it got preserved. Right. Like in terms of the historical meanings, right? There are textbook right. that recorded, oh, there's a tea there. Then there's the actual things that I discovered from the tomb. And the early ones that they back to the tomb that he was talking about. I think that's what he meant. Right. I'll just pull mm -hmm. this up in case there's anything you wanted to point out. Um, I don't think so here. Mm -hmm. But this is the uh, original text with the similar areas highlighted. If right. you're like me, you're like, oh, I can see all the T-types, but that's it. <laughs> <laughs> I can't even point to them. So right. I just didn't want to miss anything if there was anything there. So we can go... Maybe next time we can do the Chinese and English together comparison. So yeah. in case, I know like that's uh, a most great of idea. you guys don't read Chinese. So that's why we don't hmm. put much Chinese on I'll the I'll think screen. about it. I'm not sure if I can fit it mm. and still make it readable. Right. Okay. I'm not sure how many, um, but we can definitely try for that. We can find a different way to format it. Mm. Okay. So that covered sort of the, um, the first section where he covered the history of tea. And, uh, and also by the Qing dynasty, the six categories were surfaced. They were um, all out in the open, right? With the last two being, as we saw previously, white and blue tea. Um, the screen properly? What, do you want to switch? I don't know. I... I'm just thinking of paraphrasing the next section and then bring up the next section. Right. We can but... go... Do you want to go full screen or do you want to put or that up now? cam or something, I don't know. What's your thought? Did you do this on purpose? If this is your plan, I'm totally fine with it. I oh, yeah. I I made a mistake. No, no, I'm good oh, with it. Okay. I'm staring at the screen. We can go brew cam. There we go. It's just tricky for me because I've got my document on the phone, so I can't easily flip back and forth. So if it's not a train wreck, I'm going to leave it up. So if you guys don't uh -huh. like what you're seeing, let me know. <laughs> um, Including you, so keep me keep me posted, right? Okay. If you want, we can show the brew cam. Okay, and also I think I'm gonna have to change this. This is too hard to read. It's really little and really clunky and gets in the way of my remote. So I read you guys the little poem, which is awesome. So he goes on to say um, basically that uh, those six T categories emerged, and since then there's no new T categories, uh, zero, no exceptions. Okay, and he's pretty firm on that. No, literally, quote unquote, no exceptions. 
even though nowadays there are hundreds of varieties of teas. And as the saying goes, I read that to you. And then he talks about outside of China, only two tea categories are produced, the, the red and green, um, which is black tea and green tea. So red and green. And an interesting section just talking about uh, foreign tea and basically, how do I say this? Um, that tea is a giant endeavor that, that China has always been uh, deeply engaged in and never sort of afraid to try and classify and quantify and... Hmm? No? No. Uh, so in the second paragraph, I think I, it definitely I says would that. take uh, care of this part, <laughs> of uh, summarizing. The second right. paragraph... In, Fired. <laughs> sorry, because it's not very clear. Uh, the structure here is first paragraph pointing out that China has a long history and rich in uh, making and existence mm, of mm. tea, while second one mm. point out that uh, in foreign country at that time in the 70s only produced green and black tea right and in terms of their understanding of chinese tea about black tea and red tea there's confusions in terms of the tea name there's confusions so right. it's like a comparison of uh, the west doesn't really know what's going on with tea in china while they're trying to categorize tea right this kind of draws the conclusion of this First part, which he pointed out, uh, right. since the the uh, the West doesn't know the tea name, they cannot understand the tea categories mm. and uh, properly, uh, like uh, categorize that. Mm. You know, there oh, yeah. is You're definitely a, higher. That was very concise and uh, smooth. I like. There that. is a logic why this paragraph is here. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's the intro of the. Um, right. So I want to go there. So there was a couple spots in there. Yes. Oh boy. Hang on. Here we go. <laughs> if we have any problem, let's look at uh, uh, Professor Chen Chuan for a bit. Yeah, no, he's my transition. Technical uh, issue. Yeah, we'll switch this for next week for sure. We'll go on screen something this is okay this is all good though so um so again um this is sort of the some key parts from the uh from this section so as jen said it, this was published in the uh, in the 70s right now so, we know uh, outside china people are producing all kinds of uh, different teas but that's a recent decades kind of a, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, thing but at that time it's the primarily black tea and green tea right uh, the interesting thing that here wasn't highlighted somehow, uh, but it's very interesting. It kind of shows his angle about how to differentiate a different tea category. It is a science thing. It's not just uh, guessing. Uh, mm -hmm. You need to have a system that applies, that reflects the connection between different tea categories while you have a really clear line of the difference between different categories. Right. I right. think that's why I highlighted the that's bottom. That's why, here. no, it's here. Botanically, the foreign varieties, the dinner. Right, it, it, I guess what you're talking about is the discipline does indeed demand expert knowledge and careful systemic approach. Yes. To me, the, the interesting thing is this oh, right, right. last sentence is really, really key. Okay, right, and it, right. it, took, I had to, it took me a while to unpack this last sentence. So these matters should be clearly expounded because when the systemic links between the character of teas and the methods used to produce them are set out, the process by which quantitative change becomes qualitative can be discerned. If I had to read that a couple times, especially the ending, the process by which quantitative change becomes qualitative can be discerned. Mm. This is the intersection of a category being the process and the result of the process aka the flavor um okay so just uh, this is a, like almost like a sneak peek of the whole uh whole how should i say the whole article once you we read more we will notice mm. because there are lots of questions for example right talk about uh, black tea is a fully oxidized oxidized how do you know what is fully oxidized do you go through the step and it means 
That's a black tea. Right. So time signature is like, wait, what? So you're actually answering that right now. You go through all the steps of making a black tea and you come out with a with some dried leaf. Mm -hmm. So is it a black tea? Right. On the other hand, How do we know? oolong, right? There are tons of tea that claim to be oolong and, pro, uh, and go through the oolong process, like mm -hmm. the steps. But the end result is almost close to a deeper low end green tea or sometimes it's over the top and become almost like a black tea, but they still categorize them as uh, oolong. Sometimes you will find those on the market a lot. And same um, with, uh, like for example, why is a uh, Oriental Beauty by Hao Oolong? Why is that oolong tea, but not a black tea, even though it has a lot of the similarity and mm. really high, really only because that's 80% vis-a-vis 100%. So, mm. He, in his method, why uh, his theory of categorizing tea once it's uh, uh, proposed was really, uh, ex at least at that time, was accepted by a lot of uh, tea experts. I think it's not like a bulletproof, but it's, uh, mm. at that time was one of the best theories in terms of uh, covering most of the teas. Right. Mm. So um, I think let us know if that uh, time signature and everybody if that answered your question about this is a little bit more academic uh, way to translate. Yeah, just like Jubajia says, the English text was definitely written by someone from Cambridge University with a big smile. Mm -hmm. um, so it is, it is. And uh, let's just check out some comments here. Um, yeah. When you need Chinese writing, to blue long. Time signature says it's blue long nice, tea. Got it. Nice. I love that. I love that. Bruna says so. Mm. The Spanish translation of oolong is not that bad. Sometimes we also call it blue tea. I think the reason it's called blue tea is because of this uh, mm. uh, article right. or stuff. Uh, because after the uh, professor Chen Chuan published the uh, uh, several articles there in the West world, there were modifications to certain words and stuff in right. the dictionary for that. Right. It was very impactful in the. Mm -hmm. T world. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, and uh, Jubaijia says, not text, but actual tea at site. You're right, Jen. Yeah, yeah. So mm -hmm. it was a real, so what you were what you were highlighting there was that it was a proof that tea existed, not written proof, but physical right. evidence, right? In right. historical terms, that's a different level. I only read a little. Yes, Bruna, my first oolong was Te Azul. Ooh, that means blue, I guess? Yeah, yeah, I think so. Um, uh, yes, in Spanish. Ting Tse color is often referred as cyan or blue green, but it's a term filled with controversy. And Igor has some wise words here. If you see real blue tea, don't, don't drink, drink it. it. That's good. wise words. Wise words. <laughs> um, and time. So uh, hopefully, so time signature says, says quantitative becomes qualitative. That's a brain twister if you're yeah. used to the way the terms are defined as methods. Yeah, you of never research. literally mm. mix them. But I think mm -hmm. what it means is more like a. a, a, a uh, no, it, it the sand and the sand hip thing. Well, let's chat. Let's go back to what it actually what the translation says, and right. we can even come to what the Chinese says. But it says the process by which quantitative change becomes qualitative can be discerned. So I think he's still recognizing that line. There yes. is a line between quantitative change, aka the process, and the qualitative interpretation of the change. But you can start and discern them um, by understanding this this the links between character and methods. Mm -hmm. to produce them so it's it's connecting your your knowledge of the process with what's happening on your tongue not to blur them but to understand why it's an oolong why it's a black tea or why it's a failed oolong or a failed black tea mm -hmm. I think maybe that's that's why I had to read it like several times because that's what I you know it's it's a I think it's the thesis statement almost mm -hmm. like you said it's sort of the uh, absolutely sort of the meat where did that blue tea's water come from? Yes, yes. Or, <laughs> all right, I won't say it. Don't take the blue tea thing. Don't take that one self. Okay. And uh, there's one more. Uh, yours is the same. So this is a big one here. What? I didn't know if you want to see anything here. This I'm month. okay. You're okay. The... So I like your I idea. I'll try and good. squeeze them on the, uh, on both. Yeah, it's mm. just flipping. It's really awkward. Okay, so I need might need to make us disappear for a, a little bit.
just to be able to see that myself. Bye bye. What we're still here, okay? See, you can hear us, but you cannot see us. Mm -hmm. Let me slide down here for a minute. So foreign methods of classification. Right. So this was the paragraph that we summarized where um, uh, you summarized really great and I kind of didn't. But where he's talking about, he previously talked about this long, long history of tea in China and hence the ability to and the not shying away from properly addressing it. Whereas outside of China, it's just mass confusion, chaos right um black is applied to both red and black and i think there was a little twist here this isn't quite correct right um vis-a-vis -vis the chinese uh, we mm -hmm. noticed that in the chinese it was different which is actually on this one i'll just leave it overlay it like this yeah it just said the black was used for the red tea mm. more kind of correctly how it is we call red. we call that still now we still call that black tea right mm. And also later on, point now is what we call oolong a category rather than a type of tea. So and this might, for a lot of Westerners who refer to oolong tea, like the, the folks, I guess the folks in Spain are already off to a better start calling it blue tea. But for uh, those of us, the oolong thing never went away. Never went away. Same with the black tea. It's just the tradition right. in uh, English we call you know, hong cha, red tea, black tea. Mm -hmm. Oolong refers to the whole category. And not to mention in the West, even in China, nowadays oolong tea is a category. We equal the oolong tea as qing cha. They are interchangeable term mm -hmm, now. Mm -hmm. So his thing wasn't fully, his qing cha wasn't uh, fully uh, accepted right. in today. The principles were, but the, mm. the name didn't quite overtake. Yes. So, but what blew my mind was that oolong, because again, I've only of known his oolong. Time. At his time, oolong was a specific type of tea. Yes. A specific type of blue tea, or oolong, was a specific kind of oolong, to mm. use the modern terms with the historic tea. So there's a... Um, because at a certain point, you can detect those uh, legends about how oolong was invented, right? How oolong was invented. So invented a category, or that a legend, the guy who shakes with right. monster in invented a category of tea. It's just that type. That mm. process, that uh, tea cha, they eventually become that. Right, right. Yeah. Just to say there is a little like a, a, a different time kind of a difference. In his time, that's the situation. Right. But in our time, oolong is like currently oolong is the category that we know. And I uh, even highlighted part of the, the quote that I, I missed the beginning, but try asking which is more famous, Iron Goddess of Mercy, Te Guan Yin, or Wulong. This practice confounds the excellent with the second rate. So yeah. oolong is uh, just a kind of tea. Te Guan Yin was considered the premium oolong, uh, the qing cha, the premium cultivar. Mm. So, um, right. And then at the, down near the bottom, um, there's that part where non-Chinese people cannot differentiate the names. The names. Oh, sorry, I got to move. I'm in the way. <laughs> I was like, where is it? the names of teas, can they be expected to distinguish the categories? No. This is really, really uh, a little bit harsh. Um, and at first, when I read it, I read this over bef like a couple days before we got talking about it together. So I just assumed, okay, okay, calm down. It's a different time. Uh, you know, he's kind of a grouchy old man and I give him some space, right? right. But actually, this is a little bit of another... Do you feel like the rest were really academic, yes. pro, professionally written, and suddenly there's a really mean... Yeah, it doesn't quite fit. Mean tone here suddenly? Mm -hmm. well, because of I definitely felt that. I even commented when I was reading it, like, oh, it's getting a little bit political. Well, right? it turns out that may, that's not quite the case, which uh, I'll let you speak to it, because how many readers back there, but it's not as bad as it sounds. Yes. If just a literally translated, uh, it says that uh, because of the, like uh, previously it talked about a few mistakes in the West, and said because of that, um, uh, and also the six tea, ca tea, different types of tea are created in China, so we should uh, build the uh, tea category system. And uh, the West uh, doesn't tell the name difference between teas, Therefore, they cannot really tell the categorized difference 
the difference between different categories. So there's no rhetorical can they be expected to distinguish right, right. in like a, there's yeah. no question mark. It's basically no. a statement of fact, right? The, it just uh, use the example listed above about those mistakes and said because they cannot understand the T name, they cannot um, um, uh, differentiate the T category. Mm -hmm. So that I personally not very happy with the translation. I feel like the stocking a little that a little barb a little bit of an unnecessary yeah but and because of the rest of the article is so well uh translated uh, good and stuff it feels really uh academically prudent you really feel like uh, this is the translation this is what written in chinese oh especially but the very last not. sentence outsiders yeah. have poked their noses into other people's business and have been unable to make heads or tails of it a sorry story indeed. No. Again, not in quite Chinese, what's there it just at all. means the uh, the Western people are trying to do what we should do, while the inside inside means in the Chinese T zone yeah. insider, uh, people were not doing anything towards that. Mm -hmm. So that's the weirdest thing. Right. And so it's almost kind of more a of a self criticism. Yeah, it's both sides. While mm. somebody is doing your job and we just let it happen, how weird is that? So. <laughs> So time signature asked grouchy, <laughs> grouchy translator. translator. I, I don't know. I don't know what was going through their head or, and it can be, um, uh, it can just, maybe it's tricky. Like I don't, well, I don't. Uh, I don't want to guess why. Yeah. It doesn't matter. Uh, yeah. all, all I'm saying is uh, the English and the Chinese, there is a big difference in tone. Mm, yeah, a, a big, and, and when I read it as an, Eng, as an English person, and that's why we're going over it is because it, Again, I gave the guy some space because I thought, oh, this is quite harsh and sort of out of the tone. It just mm -hmm. leaps out as a, an aberration in the whole tone of the paper. And um, now going forward, I can, whenever I see those, it'll be similar to in China tea. Now I've got a flag. When the tone goes crazy, I'm going to be looking to my right and saying, hey, what does it really say? Because um, it doesn't, I, I kind of, you know, we saw that in the last book too. There's certain patterns that emerge and I think mm -hmm. we'll see that here. Mm -hmm. I don't know, but we'll see. Um, so Time Signature also said we're basically discussing semantic change here, I think vis-a-vis -vis the uh, uh, Qingcha and Wulong. Mm. And uh, yeah, ch semantic change over time. At the time of the writing, I think it was he was concerned about the mixing of a T into a category. It's um, sort of... It's like uh, saying uh, Dragon Wild Longjin is a type of uh, a category of T. Yeah, yeah. Concept. Imagine if green tea had been called dragon well instead, and he would be like, "Hey, why you call that dragon well? It doesn't. It's confusing. It's it's starting us out with a confusing start." Well, on the other hand, uh, what really happened is people that tend to do it right now. We see any pan fire to flat tea people, at least in mm. the West, or mm. lots of people mm. who just mm. get into tea. Those are long tea, but it's right. not uh, quite right. Which is why we have our, <laughs> not long jing. Which is why we have our tongue in cheek not long jing because it is not long jing. It just looks like long jing and it's a delicious tea and uh, yeah. Mm. So so yeah. oh here I think I missed some. Yeah, oh, there's tons of comments. Clifford Little said I never get to hunt up on classification. Darjeeling first flush is so lightly oxidized. It is more of a oolong, but it's class of mm. as black. Uh, yes, ish. Well, yeah. sorry, let me explain why I say yes. First, I totally agree of not to hung up on classification. Like as a tea drinker, you don't need to, you don't need to watch right, this at right. all. That's you know, right. it doesn't matter. You enjoy your tea, you, who cares what tea category or how it's made, mm. it really doesn't matter. The reason of a second of a, what you said is right, is classified as a black tea, but it's, you think it's more close to the Wulong or stuff. And I think that pose a great point and uh, that will, after we read this whole article, uh, I think uh, many of you will have a new understanding of the tea category. Personally, my take on that is, I don't think it should categorize as uh, the six tea category because there are so many new things that somehow falls outside and it's okay to be not categorized, but I just mm -hmm. don't, I don't want them to put that in Wulong in black. It's like I, I point an orange and I say, in my book, that's an apple, right? People mm. will have issues. This, this again, is in the 70s. It's a system. There's nothing wrong to update or having new things or call their tea something different. We don't have to squeeze in the six tea categories person, like how I feel about that. So 
I just I personally think a, don't think that's a wulong or a black. No, and and that's we, just Darjeeling at first flush. Yeah, and we can come back to that too uh, because their process is interesting. I almost mm. moved that. So Josh got a little bit off track, but I see that somebody, uh, Clifford, gave him the right uh, nudge in the right direction. Blue tea, the blue uh, te bleu, oolong, ching ta are the same thing. So be, that's bang on. Um, in terms of our previous discussion, Josh was busy brewing, just coming <laughs> off of his piano lessons, a little bit distracted and missed it. So that is, uh, that's right. So, and um, uh, Chen Chuan was, was uh, vying for the category to be called blue tea, which worked out in many, uh, in, I don't know how many, but in some countries in the West, it worked out and in other countries, it stuck with Uno. Mm -hmm. um, and good. I think we're all caught up on the comments and... Mm. Anything else here that we wanted to talk about? I think we've covered, so that wraps up section one. I'm gonna just slide on back to us. That's section one. So that's, that is our, uh, that is, I'm super excited about this, this uh, article. Uh, it's, it's gonna be super interesting. And um, uh, Clifford, uh, thanks for your question because it's mm. a great foreshadow of what's yet to come Absolutely. and a great question to be because and it's a certain point open to discussion and not mm. like uh, you know like what you believe or what you think we all have our own opinions yeah uh, it's not saying you have to agree with me or you have to agree with him we're just talking about what he wrote and uh, introduced some different ideas yeah and no. uh, you know, in the end, I really don't think it's so important to yeah. drink tea drinkers to know the difference or to really get into those uh, theoretical or uh, very uh, right. tom and twist language. The important thing is to enjoy your tea. Yep. If you yep. like the the sip, no matter which tea category, what it belongs to or doesn't belong to, it really doesn't affect our drinking. Absolutely, like Clifford said, it's not something to get hung up on. Um, it's 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 some neat stuff to put into our sort of into our quote-unquote toolbox or whatever just to mm. our knowledge base so we can understand more about the background the history I'm really excited to learn more about this gentleman mm -hmm. who contributed so much about so much to the tea world mm -hmm. and goes unknown so I just really want to get him out there let you guys know that this guy's out there with not just this publication but others as Jen has already said you can go digging for it now mm -hmm. and enrich if, if you're into that again like she's like we said it's you don't need to do this to enjoy tea this may just be in your personal interest zone this guy's an amazing guy um, to just sponge learn from like right. just great stuff and also, this is our very first uh, episode of this article, and it's a slightly new format because mm. we have found the uh, English translation, the link down below. You can read that anytime, mm. before, during, after. That's why we didn't read that uh, word by word on uh, our live and trying to have a summarized uh, section and uh, talk about the key things where I have a little uh, difference in terms of compared to the uh, the Cambridge translation feel mm. a little bit uh, you know not confident they're Cambridge people it's okay <laughs> they're in different world it's Anyways. okay we, you know we still see today such difficulty coming from Chinese language to English language today in 2021 uh, you know I can only imagine with travel and and uh, what uh, being what it was back then it's even trickier to get uh, to be really and they did a great job it's just a little bump mm. here and there mm. no need to guess why but you know right. it's tricky uh, there's no question about it and so if you have any suggestions in terms of how we can improve your experience of uh, you know listening mm. or reading this with us live or uh, do you like this new format or you want to you know, test drive with several sessions and decide if you have any suggest any suggestions any uh, yeah, yeah. Comments, you know. I just time just signature brought some in. good points up, but I'd love um, to hear. We do want to hear from you guys if you have suggestions mm -hmm. about format or things to do. Obviously, obviously, I already know more sound effects, so that's coming. But more related to how to present the text and, mm -hmm. uh, and whatnot. So mm -hmm. we did the overview. We focused in on the sort of interesting points today. Did you like that? Do you think there's a better way? Uh, let us know. Um, I do want to just say, Time Signature said the use of subordinate category for a superordinate category is not an unusual linguistic phenomenon, though. 
I love that. And he's right. I was thinking about that. It's not uncommon for mm -hmm. sort of one of the major members of a category to become the name of a whole category. Yes. Um, and I kind of like post fermented for dark tea. Yeah. And that's exactly the spirit of what Jen was saying is it's not, it's just to have your, have some more information. So good. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, Time Signature likes the format except for the time warp. Well, the time warp's done until, <laughs> until autumn when we'll be forced to time warp again by our uh, draconian state. But um, <laughs> I think, guys, uh, we want to thank you again for joining us and for sharing tea with us, for sharing your input. It's been very helpful, all of you, mm -hmm. um, just uh, asking questions, giving us input, and uh, throwing in Sunday Tea Book, the second... Uh, article has launched with episode 37 yes. tea classification in theory and practice by Chen Chuan um, and somebody else likes the trivia a number of minutes after the stream starts so we have a few moments to brew <laughs> good let me know what you like let me know what you don't like I'm, I'm super excited to Thanks, dive Josh. into this we will see you guys all next yep. week and stay tuned this week we've got some cool videos coming up um, no pressure uh, <laughs> we've got some cool videos coming up uh, if you like what you saw in this stream please do hit the thumbs Ooh, up yes sorry thumbs up but Lolo says that they have time warping two ways oh, yeah. it's thought... different times all over the planet the whole thing's it's a oh. disaster it's an utter disaster so yeah oh. they'll they'll have to you'll have to keep your eye on the ball for the next little bit as we all oh. jiggle in this daylight savings time warp uh, the time differences are all different for a couple weeks and then they go back to normal. It's just awful. It's okay. just awful. So okay. uh, it'll all be okay in the end. Well, um, thank you guys for joining us and uh, have a nice weekend. Until next time. Keep steeping. Keep steeping. Keep steeping.